this skinny Dutch kid shock the Muay Thai world? And how does a complete outsider win the admiration of an entire country? To, to be that guy that, that went to Thailand and beat the Thais at the Marine Sport, yeah, he was a beast. He was one of the greatest fighters in history, the Mike Tyson of kickbox. Ramon Deckers is like the that is legendary. That's, that's the greatest fighter. But what happened to him? And why is he not a household name? Well, casual fans, are, they're not aware of like some of the greats in this sport. It's, it's really unfortunate. Well, we here at Oost wanted to find out. So I did a deep dive on the legend himself, and what I found out was more brutal than I could have ever expected. Stick around as we tell you about the real life Rocky Balboa, Ramon the Diamond Deckers. I mean, if you've never seen Ramon Deckers fight, if you're someone who, you're, you're not aware of Muay Thai, just do yourself a favor and Google your Ramon Decker. I'm Nick Deer, and you're watching Oos. Born in Breda, Netherlands on September 4th, 1969, Decker's journey into the world of martial arts began at the tender age of 12. His father, a boxing enthusiast, introduced him to the sport. However, Decker's interest quickly shifted to the more intense, more intricate world of Muay Thai. By the time he was 16, Decker stepped into the ring for his first professional fight. You can see elements of his style already emerging, which is a testament to the dedication and relentless training he had been through. As you can see, Ramon throws every strike with fight ending intent. He keeps a high pace which overwhelms his opponent early in the fight. He doesn't throw feelers, he constantly walks forward putting pressure and throws brutal punches while chopping down his opponent with devastating low kicks. And after that KO, a star was born and the Muay Thai world would never be the same again. Over the next few years, his aggressive style, precision, and knockout power would garner the attention all over the Muay Thai community. It was must-see TV. By 1988, Deckers had won multiple European featherweight and super featherweight titles. In 1989, he won his first world lightweight title, but Deckers' career wasn't a straight trajectory to the top. In the late 80s, he suffered a string of losses that could have broken a lesser man, including his first series of bouts with Gilbert Ballantyne. Yet, Decker remained undeterred. He trained harder, fought fiercer, and came back stronger. His resilience paid off because on February 18, 1990, Deckers truly moved onto the world stage. In Amsterdam, he faced the reigning Lumpini champion Nam Phong, where he inflicted a rare defeat on the champion after five rounds, taking the IMF World Light Welterweight title. This could be arguably the first moment that the fighting community in Thailand took notice of Ramon Deckers. How could a European fighter be one of their champions in the sport that they created? So in response, they sent the current Lupini champion, Cherry Sorwanek. This would be Ramon Decker's biggest fight to date. But before we get to that, let's talk about what it means to be a Lumpini champion. Lumpini Stadium was originally built in 1956 and operated by the Royal Thai Army, but it's more than just a sports venue. It's a living, breathing embodiment of Thai culture, a testament to the country's rich heritage and enduring passion for Muay Thai. It stands as a symbol of unity and national pride, a place where dreams are realized and legends are born. And the honor of becoming a Lupini champion is bestowed onto only the greatest of fighters. So keep that in mind as we go back to March 27th, 1990, when current Lupini champion Cherry Sorwanich fought Ramon Deckers in Amsterdam. Deckers' brutal and unrelenting combos were no match for the champ. He was KO'd in the first round. This was a shock to the entire world, but nowhere more so than Bangkok, the home of Muay Thai. After this bout was when Deckers was first invited to fight in Thailand itself. Less than a month later, he was fighting Nam Phong. Again, but this time in Thailand. The fight went the full five rounds. And even though elbows were allowed in this rule set, Decker's first time fighting this way, many people felt that he won this matchup. But the Thai judges didn't think so and gave the fight to Namphone on points. In fact, Decker's lost the next three fights he had at Lumpini Stadium, even though he had felt he had won all of them. This now brings us to the most important series of fights in Ramon Decker's career, his four fights against Koban. Who is Koban exactly? Well, he was from a small village in Thailand where he started fighting professionally at the age of 11, winning his first Lumpini championship by the age of 19. He finished his career with a record of 250 wins to 20 losses, with 90 of those wins coming by knockout. So basically, he was the Thai Terminator. Deckers and Koban had their first fight take place in Paris on the 21st of April, 1991. And Deckers was KO'd in the first round with a devastating left hook. 
This set them up for an incredible rematch. So less than four months later, they fought again, this time in Lumpini Stadium, surrounded by a hometown crowd. After losing bout after bout by judge's decision, Ramon Deckers knew he had to win by KO, and he did not disappoint. I think my best fight was against Koban. When I knocked him out in the first round, in Bangkok. Uh, After leveling the competitive score to one fight each, everyone knew there would have to be a grudge match. But before that happened, Deckers had another series of famous fights. Joel Cesar was the best of the best in France. And while Deckers spent 18 months fighting almost exclusively in Thailand, bar the second Koban fight, Cesar was busy making a name for himself in Europe. So when Deckers got the fight to face off with a Frenchman in Paris, it was poised to be a dramatic and explosive affair. Deckers knew it wouldn't be a walk in the park, but his time spent fighting in the cauldron of Thailand forged him into the arguably the greatest fighter on the planet at the time, and Joao Cesar was no match for him. A brutal first round knockout left Cesar seeking an immediate rematch, but much to his detriment, many saying the fight was rushed. Deckers faced the Frenchman twice within 32 days of each other. Deckers dismantled him in the second fight as well, winning both with KOs from left hooks, leaving the Frenchman in his wake. By this point, Ramon Deckers was a huge star in Thailand. And it was so normal for us that we actually didn't realize how famous we were. 1990 and 1991 were a whirlwind of traveling and fights all over the world. It wasn't until early 92 that the rubber match with Koban was set. But this time, both fighters went the distance. Five rounds of brutal and intense fighting ended in decision with the hometown Koban taking the victory. They would fight one more time in 1993, where Deckers would this time get the victory in another five-round decision, leaving this rivalry of titans locked at two and two. After years of fighting, injuries started to catch up with him. He had his foot fused to his ankle? Yes. They were going to amputate it. He said, well, what else can we do? Oh, we can fuse your ankle to your shin. So he used to say, I used to just do pads. I wouldn't spar and just save it to the fight. And then if it broke, it broke. I'd change the southpaw and then hopefully not use it. But then he was so adamant that he had the win, he'd just go back to orthodox and just start using it anyway and start wow. smashing people. <laughs> Deckers ended up fighting professionally for another 13 years, ending his career with a record of 186 wins, 95 five TKOs, 36 losses, and two draws. He became an absolute legend of the sport, and after competing for the highest honors all over the world, the Muay Thai community finally showed their respect. Throughout his career, he had become an icon in Thailand. We, we didn't need passport controls. We were on the, on, the, on the daily news and television live every day. 50 million people watched it. When Ramon was fighting, you could uh, theoretically say that whole Thailand was silent. The taxi stopped, everybody needed to see Ramon Deckers live on television by that time. It's crazy to think of any athlete having that much drawing power, like Pacquiao in the Philippines or Maradona in Argentina. These athletes have become elevated to levels beyond sports. They have become cultural icons. But all of those athletes were from the countries that idolized them. Imagine the draw one would have to have in order to win over a crowd in a foreign land. But Deckers did it. In late 2012, on the occasion of the 85th birthday of the King of Thailand, Deckers received a royal award from the Thai royal family for his services to the sport. The Dutchman was appointed ambassador for all foreign fighters in Thailand. I don't know what to say exactly, you know. But uh, this moment, this day, was worth uh, 25 years of fighting. Sadly, less than two months later, Deckers would unexpectedly pass away. And he died of a heart attack while riding a bike, right? Yeah, yeah, in, in, the, in the park by himself. No, with no one to give him any CPI, he just passed away. Um, 42 years old, and then um, to die on a push bike is crazy. So what is the legacy that Deckers left behind? Deckers was more than just a fighter. He was an embodiment of the spirit of Muay Thai. His technical finesse, his unyielding spirit, and his dedication to the sport all contribute to the legend that is Ramon Deckers. He demonstrated that Muay Thai isn't just about physical prowess, but also about mental fortitude and unwavering determination. 
To say that Deckers was a pioneer would be an understatement. He opened doors for Western fighters in a sport dominated by the ties. He showed that with hard work, dedication, and a never say die attitude, anyone can make a mark in the world of Muay Thai. Deckers' influence continues to resonate in the world of martial arts. He has inspired countless fighters who have followed in his footsteps, and his fighting style is studied and admired by enthusiasts and professionals alike. His story is a testament to the power of perseverance, the importance of dedication, and the beauty of the human spirit. In the end, Ramon Deckers was not just a fighter, but a beacon of hope for those who dare to dream, a symbol of resilience for those who refuse to give up, and a legend for all who love the sport of Muay Thai. His life, his career, his legacy continue to shine bright like the diamond he was. Let us know in the comments below if there's another fighter you want us to profile next. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend as this really helps us out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Nick the Ear, and we will see you in the next one.